Hello, my name is Rob Karlmark, and I'm a meteorologist here at ABC 10. Now, we're a local ABC television affiliate, and our TV signal roughly goes from Oroville down to about Turlock, almost to the Bay Area, Fairfield, Vacaville, and then over to Truckee, almost to South Lake Tahoe. So essentially, inland Northern California is what I usually forecast day to day. But since this is on YouTube and on the internet, you could be watching me from Dublin, or from Dubai, really it goes worldwide. And that's why I wanna start with uh, where we are with El Nino. Now the last video I did on this, uh, a lot of people saw it and I got some great feedback. I wanna thank you for that. So this is an update to that, just showing you where we're at at the moment. Just for a quick refresher, El Nino is when the mid Pacific right around here becomes warmer than normal. So you get a lot of warm air that start, or excuse me, warm water that starts off in South America, then it moves to the middle of the Pacific. And this region is really important because what happens is that then the global weather system start to tap into the warmer surface, which creates warmer air on top and more humidity and starts to tap into it and creates different anomalies or differences compared to normal all across the planet. So this is a global weather phenomenon. It's been well uh, charted. It's been well observed for many, many decades. And we pretty much know where we typically uh, go with this. Now, it's not every year. It's not 100% guaranteed. But there are many connections that routinely keep happening again and again. So that's why we talk about it because it can be helpful months down the road. Uh, off the coast of California right now, the water is actually really cold. Remember, we're just wrapping up a very long cold winter, number one. Number two, a lot of wind right off the coast because it blows north to south creates upwelling, which is bringing up colder water underneath to the top. So it's very cold. And then also there's some element of a lot of runoff that's working its way out to the coast. This is snow that's melted going out to sea. So there's some element of that. It's very localized, but there's some of that going on. So we're not really making connections, but in South America, we are. And this is very important. That's the surface level. We are very confident going forward that this is gonna keep pace and if anything, it's going to increase uh, in intensity because we know what's going on underneath the surface. So all these little X's here are actually buoys with temperature uh, at depth. So you can see what's going on beneath the Pacific and this goes all the way to Australia. This side of it is on the South America side and then what we're looking at is again, anomalies. Temperatures warmer than normal are indicated here uh, with the orange all the way down to the yellow. So you can see there's big pockets of subsurface water that's much warmer than normal. And then once it starts to surface, then it really starts to interact with the air above and change the patterns. And then it blows with the trade winds out to the middle. So we know a lot more is coming. These waves of warmer water than normal are, are called Kelvin waves. And there's been many of them. And that's the reason why we are in this spot. 0.5 degrees Celsius above a baseline is called El Nino. It's La Nina when it's in the opposite direction. We've been living down here for three years and now we're starting to move above. By the way, this is just Americans version of this and it's mostly accepted worldwide. Australia is a little bit higher at 0.08, but regardless, we're all going well above that in the months ahead. So this is the computer models as they crunch the number. You can see the dashed line, that's sort of an average so we're, we're gonna be there. It's either gonna be a moderate or potentially if it gets up here, it could be a strong one in the winter. So let me dial it back again. Many of you are watching me from California. So let's get to our local impacts first. Now, the number one issue here is that this is a global phenomenon. And almost every time after El Nino, either that year or the following year, you do tend to see an increase in global temperatures compared to average. So that's the number one concern. Remember, higher temperatures often mean more extreme weather, wet and dry, and also hot, and in some cases, cold. It just takes your normal patterns and ranks it up to a whole different level. So the, getting back to California, the odds favor wetter than normal conditions in Southern California. Year after year that we talk about El Nino, and then you have your observations, what actually happened, it tends to look like this. This is not 100% how it's gonna pan out. We had a super strong El Nino in 26, 2015 to 2016, and it was not that way. In fact, it was actually uh, much wetter in places like the Pacific Northwest. So take it with a grain of salt, uh, but you know, if you crunch the numbers, you have to at least give some 
respect to what's happened over the years and all the observations. So this is what we're looking at. So then when you put it into computer model forecast, factoring in El Nino, uh, you have one that just came out. I think it came out today. This is on Monday, May 8th. This is showing roughly that pattern. Wetter than normal in Southern California, maybe Central California as well. Drier than normal in the Pacific Northwest. This tends to go through the Southeast as well. But if you want to get back to really the whole point of this is that this is one localized aspect. You don't base the performance of an El Nino forecast if it was working or not, if it happened or not, and if the data is any good or not, based on one region. This is just California, folks. Once you get closer to the source, remember, we're talking about the middle of the Pacific, the confidence starts to really go up that you're looking at areas that are wetter than normal right along the equator, just above that drier than normal. And this goes all across the planet. So it's one of these rare weather phenomenons and events that the whole planet is watching all at the same time. The odds go up that you're likely to, going to be able to predict this the closer you get to where the action is. And also the deeper you go in time, as well as the closer you get to the actual event when things start to uh, really connect with the atmosphere and start to make all those changes. So again, this is going to be early winter, roughly what we're expecting to happen months down the road. All right, a lot of El Nino. Let's get back to the local forecast. As of right now, again, Monday morning, we've got some light precip pushing through. Not a big deal, but we're wrapping things up. What's going to happen is that we're going to see this one last little pulse push on through with rain and snow. And once it's out of here, it's all about warming up. So again, we could see some clouds, some sprinkles, some flurries up high, more, more than that in nor uh, far northern California. And then that should be it. We know what happens in May, right? We know exactly what happens. We tend to dry out and we tend to see a shift back to warmer and dry weather that should stay here for a while. So the rest of this week is going to be nice and calm. We're going to love it. Lots of sunshine, no major rain or anything like that. Temperatures in the 70s, then the 80s. This upcoming weekend is another taste of summer with widespread highs in the mid-90s.